Hello everyone. How many of you woke up this morning, had your shower, had breakfast, got dressed and made your way into work? Most of you, right? As a marketeer, of course, I noticed I woke up with the alarm clock in my iPhone, which I cannot live without. I showered with my user in gel because I have sensitive skin. I washed my hair with Kiehl shampoo because I'm so hooked up on all this non-paraben, non-silicon, non-sulfite stuff. I then had my Burgo de Arias, a Spanish brand of cheese. I cleaned my teeth with my Oral-B brush. I put on my moisturizer, Kiehl's again, I'm afraid, made up slightly with Garland's Meteorites, put on my nice Zara summer dress and my gorgeous Todd's and booked a car to go to get to work. These are just some of the brands I interacted with in just under one hour. And you're probably doing exactly the same thing. You just might not be aware or notice. But I do hope that after today, you start paying attention to these little interactions and you learn a little bit more about why brands are so important in your everyday life. So what is a brand? A brand is the difference between an alarm clock and my iPhone, between a moisturizing cream and my Kiehl's, between a toothbrush and my Oral-B. The word brand actually comes from the Old Norse word brander, which meant to burn in, and referred to the way cattle were marked with an iron so they could be identified. This way of branding, which is basically marking for identification, has led many to associate a brand to a name or a logo, and more recently to a tagline or a slogan, just do it. A good way to understand what a brand is, is by ruling out what a brand is not. And a brand isn't your name or your logo, or your tagline, or your slogan. It's not your products, or your branches, or the advertising, or your website. These are tools you can use to strategically shape people's feelings about this brand or organization via marketing and communications. But your brand is so much more than that. Branding and brands come before marketing and communication efforts. They are bigger than both or either of them, and are continuously shaped by being out there. So ultimately, brands are built by what companies decide they are, but they are also built by the messages that are spread about them by the companies they belong to, and the consumers they interact with every day. Jeff Bezos from Amazon says that your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. There is certain truth to this. No matter how hard we try to build brands, and we will be learning a lot about these in the next sessions, brands behave a little bit as people. There is a very rational side to them, but they are also incredibly emotional, and the way they relate to people is purely emotional and intangible. Some people go as far as stating that a brand refers to all this collection of gut feelings that you have about an organization. The gut reaction when you think about a product or company and its services. Look at the brands on this screen. What is your gut reaction? Because when I hear Harley Davidson, I immediately think of a free rider, a rocker at heart who loves heavy metal and belongs to a community of like-minded individuals. And when I hear Ryanair, I instantly think about plastic and uncomfortable experiences and the ultimate sense of just not worth it. This collection of associations works as mental shorthand. We create brands to summarize our attitudes about basically everything, people, places, things. And this summary contains what we expect each brand is capable of delivering. How we relate to brands is a lot about how we relate to people. So when we meet someone for the first time, we start forming impressions about them. We make little mental notes about how they look and the things that they say and they do. And as time goes by, we make adjustments. We amplify some attributes, we add others, and we delete some. And it works exactly the same way with brands. Everything you say and you do as a brand, as a marketeer will influence how people think about you. Every interaction is an opportunity to build your brand. Positive interactions build your brand, and we will see this later on in this specialization, and negative interactions have a strong impact as well. Sometimes so strong that you never quite recover. For brands, like people, Every interaction is an opportunity to refine a reputation from an ad to an app, which is why it's so essential to be consistent. And as with people, first impressions count. But it is also important how we manage that impression time after time after time. This repetition helps to create a picture in people's minds about what to expect. 
Remember in one day, people encounter over 5,000 branded messages. We like it when brands keep their promises and when brands deliver what consumers expect from them. So it is key that we treat brands as a promise, as a pledge, as a commitment for what it stands for, its single driving focus. It is the impression we leave with consumers time after time after time. The secret for a brand is to stand for something, for one thing, and to be focused enough to stick to that one thing. And brands stand out when they are consistent, when they make promises they can keep, and they deliver on that promise every time a consumer encounters the brand. But it is also important to understand that brands exist in a crowded space. They need to stand for something, but also be different enough from others to be remembered. A relationship with a brand is a bit like an emotional bank account. Positive experiences with the brand are like adding a little bit of money to the account, and a bad experience is like taking money from the account. It takes you time to fatten it up again. With brands, actions speak louder than words, and your brand will be built by what you do more than by what you say. So to recap, what is a brand? Well, it is created for people, for consumers, and their experience with the brand is fundamental for long-term growth and sustainability. It represents a relationship, and each relationship will be personal. So any branding is by definition subjective, and it starts with an agreement, what we will call a brand promise. But that promise needs to be nurtured carefully.